Deborah Lee Baldwin, author of three books about succulents. And I'm in the garden of Mark and Marsha Rafter, artists who live near San Diego. And we'll be seeing their lovely garden and how they combine outdoor garden art with succulents in a beautiful setting. Oh, we really like color, so everything has a lot of color no matter what. So I did ceramics since I was in college. And I started mosaics about 15 years ago. And that's what I do pretty much full time now. And I teach classes and do commission work and embed things in the garden. One of the fun things about seeing an artist's garden is how the artists position things. Something tells you, yeah, that looks right there. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. You get, you get a feel for what's right. And in this case, it's angled just a little bit so it catches the sun. So the dichroic glass and the wings will change color depending on where you're standing. So if you're here, you're going to see blues and greens. You start moving over here, it's going to start changing to oranges and purples. So I started out with ceramics too as a part of my adult life. That's how I met Marcia, actually at a gallery opening. So um, now I transitioned to metal because we needed armatures for sculptures and now I add acrylics and glass and other things and do figurative art, two-dimensional, three-dimensional. composite with cement that I use for doing the dragonfly bodies and I applied it to an armature and made a rock. So. I, love, I love how you just say, so I made a rock. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's what you do when you're an artist, you know, you just say, oh, I can do that. And if you can't, well, you find that out pretty fast. Too. Well, that's what the rest of us can't do. I mean, we, we don't make our own garden art. We don't weld. We don't have kilns. So well, you guys a, have something pretty special going a, on here. It's a craft. You have to practice. It's like anything else. The more you do it, the better you get at it. So well, and when you look at things, you think, oh, I can make that. So when we got our new patio furniture, I made the coffee table. And I taught a class in how to make a bench. Live in gratitude and watch the garden of your life grow. Oh, wow, that's beautiful. It's mosaic. It's pretty definitely Marsha, except for the eyes of my dragonflies. I learn a lot from her, and then I use it in my artwork. Because she's an awesome teacher. Um, I call them sort of flower pops, but they're mandalas. Oh, because they, they're lollipops. Yes, yeah. Here's a nice view of Mark's studio from here. Mark, is this sort of an ideal life you have with your studio right outside your front door? Very much so, and the, the key part of it is it's separate from Marsha's studio. Oh, That's man. really important. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> because we have different styles, and she teaches class, so it's really important for her to have a lot of control over hers. And I'm a, I'm a guest when I have to do my fused glass, which is also something I do. So this texture here is actually taken off of one of the palm trees in the backyard. You used a, a palm tree? Yeah, so I made a mold of the palm tree texture and then used that to do the impression in the clay, which is why all the rivulets of glaze draw down like they do. So that's how the pot was made, and it's a half pot, and I did this weave. So this is uh, various metal strips that are woven in and out of each other, and then um, there's a copper metal coating put on it, and then a blue patina, and then I hung the half pots on the front of it, and the oranges and the greens and the blues all go together really nicely with the succulents that Marsha put in the pots. The clay just came out fantastic. Yeah, that was the way the color, the variation in the glaze. So you've got a whole bunch of different textures in there. So I make five or six different slabs of clay with different kinds of textures and then I tear the pieces and put them all together and then selectively glaze some. And this actually has roots in it that were taken from an actual weed that I made another mold out of. <laughs> and then use that as a part of the base of the plant. So you sort of have something on the outside, what's really on the inside. So. That was before you got into the metal work and now you're in love with metal. We won't be seeing any more of Mark's pots, at least for a while. Well, like on a special occasions, I make them, you know, for special people like, you know, Deborah and my wife and others. <laughs> I'm right up there. <laughs> By the way, did you see that one? Valentine's Day present? It was a Valentine's Day present. All made with slabs that are cut and put together randomly. I wanted to see how tall a hand-built pot I could make, and so that was that was about as far as I was willing to go. And it took me a while to figure out what plants to put in it because I like the red glaze that breaks um, yellow and orange like that. Uh-huh. All of this is ceramic tile with mosaics. All the leaves, the birds, 
the flowers, the butterflies, they're all ceramic. And then all of this is what's called smalty. Smalty being what, glass? Glass, yes. I like dragonflies a lot, in part because they embody change. They start out as little nymphs in the water and they turn into these awesome creatures. And it gave me a chance to combine a clay body, metal, and then fused glass, which is really cool. And then my wife taught me how to do this really neat mosaic here. I've sort of moved on to other things, but dragonflies mean a lot to me and they're really cool garden things. I have an emphasis on metamorphosis and change as I kind of come from a career in engineering and move into art, you know, it's really significant to me. So, but it's all steel with fused glass on the top for the leaves, the kind of canopy, and it's got a copper plating on the front. Well, this was a three day class. And so she's worked on it one more Tuesday morning and has one more Tuesday morning to go. So you can offer it again? Almost a four week class. Yes, I will. It's basically teaching my students how to do what I did for the six feet wide uh, opuntia that I did for a, a client. I used to have a white pegboard, but I don't really like white pegboard. So I fixed that.